when you flip to the other side of this thing and the guy that they brought in who we mentioned at one point was just a perennial people or he's he's a bum and he's not any good and just always disrespected was cj anderson is coming obviously he got cut by the broncos because they didn't want to pay him anymore that he had a decent contract with him so he gets cut he lands with this team and he had this coming off his best year ever he averaged over four four yards a carry thousand yards and in the games where they end up plugging this man and giving him the ball the broncos had great success and typically cj anderson has success listen i don't think cj anderson is the sexiest player available but i mean at some point like you have to quit hating and just realize that he's a he's a decent running back and not only is he a decent running back he was like one of the best pass protectors in the league no doubt and, and so there's no there's not a ton of reason to take him off the field you had jay stew come in and get 198 carries last year i think cj anderson goes over that mark i think he's at the around the 220 area you had six touchdowns from jay stew i could see Anderson being right around in that that sure. threshold right there, sure. if not more, and I see him having a higher average and and really helping this team out, and certainly not getting taken out at the goal line for Christian McCaffrey. Well, like you said, C.J. Anderson had his best year in total rushing yards of his career. He's had much higher efficiency ratings playing with Peyton Manning in the past, right. but that's a long time ago, and those teams don't exist anymore. We all know Peyton; he's doing commercials now. The thing about C.J. Anderson is. What he did last year, if you look at his game log, there's not very many sexy games in there. There is a 30 and a 28, but this was a Broncos team that the wheels fell off of. Right. The first four games they of the season. They couldn't throw the ball. The first four games of the season, I believe they might have been 4-0. and They went into week five on a bye, and they had Trevor Simeon getting the Sunday night football conversation interview, and then all of a sudden the next week, the Giants come in there and beat the heck out of them. Yeah. The, the lowly – Giants that just get, you know, just were getting slapped around. The Giants couldn't do anything against anybody last year, and they went in there and, and slapped up the, the Broncos. Right. When nobody thought that could happen. But the first three out of the four weeks of the year, the first three three games, for, first four games, he gets 20 carries, 25 carries, 20 carries. They're using him like a horse. And then they get they get slapped up week six against the Giants. And, like, that was just the beginning of a huge downhill fall off. Before you know it, Trevor Simeon, who had just been on Sunday Night Football's interview, or maybe it's Monday night, one of those two, just right. you know, loving him. You're four zero, Trevor Simeon. Welcome to the big time. And how does it feel to be a big star? A couple weeks later, my man is benched. Right. Okay, so the Broncos went from way up here to way down there in just a matter of weeks, and and C.J. Anderson felt that. I mean, there's a stretch in the middle of the season there where he just had ugly games and it and just no carries. They they couldn't do anything, and that's not his fault. Like they just, they just, they didn't know what they were doing. If it wasn't for the love that the Denver community and ownership group has for John Elway, you would have heard a lot more trash talking about the Broncos. Right. But they were like, "Oh well, what did you expect? They had see, they had Trevor Simeon, and that's right. all. You know, what did you expect? And then now, who you know, they was, bring in, they, they bring a- in Case Keenum, and we'll see what happens. But C.J. Anderson moves on to greener pastures, which is cam newton and weapons right you know not that the broncos didn't have good receivers obviously emmanuel sanders and and sure and um demarius thomas are freaking awesome and there's a there's a good a good blueprint of an offensive line in denver but they had they got troubles on the right side and their their rookie got hurt and they just they had some pieces kind of moving all around and you just when you're a train wreck on offense you're a train wreck on offense but no doubt at the end of the day when you look at things cj anderson's at the 11th overall in elusive rating yeah i mean it, he's a fat terrible running back but he's uh, he's crushing he's he's decent in the elusive rating at number 11 he's the best or the second best pass blocker in the league last year w- w- depending on where you look at it yeah these pro football focus those these next uh these elusive rating stats are solid for cj all these other stats that you had up here that you, as you click through profile football focus 11 any, 11th in yards after contact that's anytime you click every per every, attempt per attempt every time you click something cj's over there yeah like his name's top 10 top 12 and every every one of these different stats and you know just to mention those like you said before anytime and and, and christian mccaffrey's always in the 20s on these and sure he's not a veteran running back like cj anderson he's not been around the block as many times but I think what we we can agree here is that is you know 
Um, CJ so, Anderson at this point in his career is better than Jay Stu at his point in his career. That's yeah, my hesitation. I couldn't remember Jay Stu's name. That's exactly as you read my mind. What I was about to say, what we can agree here is that the the Panthers just upgraded their their mall or running back. Right. They they they're big back that they want to grind it with. They just got a better CJ Anderson was not good in the red zone last year. I will take that I will take that hit all day long there's stats out there to prove it but there was years back in there when you were talking about the efficiency of CJ Anderson how he's been better he had like eight touchdowns in in yeah. like a really short game uh, yeah. stretch there and so he has a nose for the end zone you put him on a team that where, where the defense can't keep I mean right. I, again I'm sure at the end of the year there they were play they were trying to figure out a Paxton I think they went back to Brock you know, yeah, they, like they were trying anything. They were try- they were trying anything. So when you get close to the end zone and things tighten up and your offense is falling apart, there's no chance you're I, getting any rushing. I'm not trying to sit here and have a love fest for C.J. Anderson. I'm not saying that by any means, but, but I, think he's, I, I, I think he's a disrespected high. back, and I don't think he's a terrible player. He's above that. He's an above average running back in this league, in my opinion. Agreed. And I, I just he's just it's just the same people who don't like him don't like the guys like Jordan Howard and those other type of guys. But they're oh, use, he's a, a plot useful players going to be a plot. I think he's going to be useful on this team. I mean, you may not want to start him every week, but shit, there there may be stretches where you want to have CJ Anderson in your lineup every single week. I, I, I would tell you that CJ Anderson is going to have better fantasy output this year than Jay Stu did last year and it's going to con- it's going to keep and suppress the, the the ceiling for Christian McCaffrey. The point of all this and and the point of all of what we just talked about was to bring it around. CJ Anderson does not help Christian McCaffrey. I don't believe right. obviously like you said as a Christian McCaffrey owner, you don't want Christian McCaffrey out there carrying it twenty times, but you would have much rather seen them bring in somebody not quite as technically sound as right. cj anderson because cj anderson is just fine as a third down back he can catch the ball he can pass protect he can stay on the field obviously christian mccaffrey is going to be on the field and they had plenty of sets last year where christian mccaffrey is running around while jay stew is on the field yeah I but think- christian but jay stew is not the versatile all-around running back that cj anderson is and maybe jay stew would have been if he didn't have early injuries that really hurt him and crippled him because obviously we all love jay stew you can look at those madden ratings when he came out of college he was you know the most ridiculous athlete as a running back we had seen in a long time when he came out of Oregon but at this at this point coming in last year he was a shell of himself and CJ Anderson is a big upgrade for the Panthers Christian McCaffrey pops up as the second overall running back in uh cumulative number of snaps a running back ran per pass route only second to Le'Veon Bell that's huge it's it's absolutely huge but again you bring in uh, CJ Anderson is not going to hurt him in that aspect of things, and you'll see him on third down. But you bring in a guy like DJ Moore, and you still have Funches, and you bring uh, Olsen back, and you have another guy like Curtis, uh, Samuel. Curtis Samuel, absolutely, who can all kind of do similar things. And I'm not saying that Christian McCaffrey is going to get run off the field by any one of those guys because he certainly earned his keep last year. But I'm just saying that there's the target there's, distribution is going to have right. to spread out this year. The target's going to have to to be a little bit more equally distributed between running backs, wide receivers and tight ends and last year they didn't have any wide receivers to throw to and they didn't have any tight ends to throw to and they just threw it to christian mccaffrey and it's not gonna be like this year i don't it's not I gonna don't be like that so. this i think year. i mean i again and i hate to be hating on this guy the whole reason we're having I this conversation him. i love is him. because there was a point in the off season where we were like people were sending us stuff for christian mccaffrey and you and i had both come to the the conclusion that i don't want to sell this guy i love this guy that why would we, i want to sell this we, guy that we we can literally take a picture of a text string that says we don't want to sell him because he's too much fun to be on our team and that is exactly why we wanted to have this conversation and put it on the air for you guys because we loved him so much we decided we would not sell him and then it just happened things got into we got negotiations started and we figured out that a couple of first round picks next year could get us Zeke and we did it. Our first round pick and another team's first round pick that's supposed to Which, be late. Obviously, was, if you get Zeke and we are we are we won the championship last year with that team. Third team, third place. Sorry, third place. We got a couple teams. Yeah. Third place with that team last year. So it's a it's a strong team. And we and got one of the reasons we've got third place is because he got us eight points in week sixteen. Right. And then the other tr- pick that we traded was it was another guy who has a really solid team so we basically two in late essence, seconds for the most I mean part first. traded two late first two late ones obviously in ffpc it works like if you get bounced out of the playoffs you can win you the can, first you round can pick, win the, the first round one. pick so that's always a possibility uh, clearly if our team gets 
for some reason doesn't make the playoffs or the other guy's team who made the playoffs last year and has a good squad, we could have potentially just gave it up two really high picks. But the reality of it is, is it's we're probably unlikely. the two best teams in the league. Yeah. And, there's and we just sh- added Zeke. Right. Like that's, we were, we were, we were the, at the top or right behind the top points, total points going towards the playoffs, had us a bye, slipped out of the hands. For one reason, we just got some unlucky injuries and had some bad weeks right there before the playoffs started. But we are a good team, got third place, probably should have got second place, but in what and it's you know, one eight point week in a bad time and in week 15 week 16 and you go from first place second place to third place the way the F- ffpc works there's three teams playing for it it's really cool how it works in the playoffs and we just didn't get it done we got third place and we just upgraded to zeke and we got a chance to go back to the playoffs and we're going to try to take home the money and that's how we played it right and that's 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 what i'm saying i think christian mccaffrey while whilst being safe and enjoying to be on my team I didn't I didn't see him his ceiling going up very much, at least in the next year and seeing how it plays out. And I'm trying to win money right now, right this second. Well, Zeke's so we a- hopped on an opportunity. Zeke's averaging you twenty points a game. Christian McCaffrey's averaging you fourteen points a game. And so I'll take those uh, that you don't get a twenty point average without getting some thirties. And Christian McCaffrey's reason his average is fourteen with all those twenties is because he gives you the eights. Right. I gotta get rid of the eights. I don't. I don't mind the fourteen. I don't mind the eights if it's my RB two and I drafted him in the tenth round. Or, right, which or can't do that round anymore, or yeah. whatever. But that's. But even. But the love fest on Christian McCaffrey started out. You had to get him in the third round as a rookie last year yeah. in, in a startup, and it worked out for people. Like you, you, his value increased, which was even kind of hard to believe that his value went up considering where he started with an ADP coming out as a rookie. But I just don't see that there's it can go any higher than that. Yeah, well, I think we've we've covered all our bases. But hopefully, we got our point across. I to think you we there. I think we rounded the bases four or five times. Yeah. So let's uh, for let's, your pleasure. Let's, let's take a quick break here, and we'll come back with some Tennessee Titans, Derrick Henry, uh, Deion Lewis chit chat. 